Yes, people, welcome back to the Football Psych YouTube channel for a brand new video where I'm going to be talking about emotion. Now, does it get in the way of business on the pitch? And can it cloud fans' judgment of a manager or player? But before we get into that, make sure that if you enjoy the video, you go and give it a like, subscribe if you're new around here and you enjoy football content, you're in the right place. And why not click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload? It would be rude not to. Also, I've got all my socials down there, including my Instagram, so go check them out as well. But now that's done, let's talk football. So emotion in football. Now, every fan feels it. It's one of the biggest parts of football. After all, it does bring us moments like this. It is Kieran Trippier. It is delicious. Glorious, glorious England goal. But does emotion get in the way of what really matters in football? Performances and results. Now, I think there's two main sections to look at, really. You've got managers and you've got players. So firstly, let's tackle managers. Now, I think it's important to note that we're moving into like a new era, especially in the Premier League, but it's seen in different leagues as well. Now, what I mean by that is young managers, often club legends, club heroes, are now being given opportunities you know, in early stages in their managerial career to go to big clubs and start a project. And I'll touch on that a bit later on. But your main examples are Lampard, who's obviously now gone. Oli at Man United. He's had a little bit more experience, to be fair. Arteta's first head coach position too. So they're your main three. Uh, but you've also got Steven Gerrard um, with Rangers, obviously, in the Scottish League too. Now, it's, it's really... not the second Scottish League, the Scottish League too. Um, but I think it's really interesting because that's only happened in the last couple of years, 18 months. And it seems to be that one club's done it and the others are almost taking inspiration from that. And I think it's good. It's good for football to young managers to be given them roles. But I also think you've got to be careful and they have to climb the ladder in some aspect. Lampard had a job before at Derby. Like I said, Arteta's is his first role and ollie has been at a variety of different clubs in different leagues. But it is good to see. It's good to see as fans, as English fans as well, that even though not all these managers are English, it's they almost trust in the, the young English talent maybe because they understand what it means to get given a chance, maybe because they've been in the game a little bit sooner than some other managers. So I guess the next thing to consider is the club or organisation they work for themselves. So Lampard at Chelsea, Arteta at Arsenal and Oli at Man United as the three examples I've just used. Now, I think you can almost group Arsenal and Man United historically. And I say historically, it was one manager each really in recent times where they were at the club for 10, 15 plus years each, obviously Arsene Wenger and Sir Alex Ferguson. Now, that automatically groups them as they are similar in the way the clubs run, maybe, in terms of on the field and the decisions from above. They trust people for a little bit longer. They maybe buy into more of a project if that actually exists. And then you've got Chelsea, which is almost a manager merry-go-round. You know, get managers out, get managers in every couple of seasons, 18 months, maybe even less than that. However, it works. It's a successful strategy employed by Chelsea. So they are three clubs and it's almost, like I said, United and Arsenal tend to trust someone for a little bit longer, you know, allow them to put their stamp on the team. And Chelsea don't really tend to go for that approach. And all three clubs have had different success in the past two decades, but are three of the biggest teams in the country. Now, I think I can speak for fans of all three of those clubs, Arsenal, Chelsea and Man United, when I say that everyone wants to see these young managers succeed. 
I think you'd be crazy to argue otherwise, really. But is it just wishful thinking? You know, can it really happen? We've already seen one of them drop out in Frank Lampard getting the sack. But it's important to note he is at the most cutthroat of them three clubs. Maybe if Arteta was at Chelsea, he would have been gone already. Um, and then you've got United, where they've been a bit hit and miss, but are doing well in the Premier League this season. Just haven't been able to string that form together. But ultimately, like I've already mentioned, what really matters is performances and then results and then trophies. And not in that order, in fact. I think trophies is the priority. Results in the league, you know, obviously dictates your league position. And almost performances come last. But I think as fans, we prefer to see the performances, which bring results, which bring trophies. However, from the hierarchy at clubs looking down, it's the other way. It's almost in reverse. But does a project actually exist? And I use the word project because Gary Neville touched on it recently. He said they're actually almost a myth. Now, we thought we were going to see one with Chelsea. You know, Lampard spending 200 plus million, bringing in his types of players, although the club had their targets as well. But then he never got to carry that out. You know, you look at a Jurgen Klopp, he definitely started a project at Liverpool and may potentially be seeing it out soon, depending on what happens with his future. But it took three years and that's that's the thing. Three years is a long time. I appreciate that. But that's what it takes sometimes to build a team from the ground up. Now, Chelsea are in a different position. I think they've always had very good players and a lot of money. Liverpool had to take those three seasons, those six windows almost, to, to build the team they've got now. And it's the life cycle of the team seems to end. And that's fine too. But in other senses, I don't think you're seeing a project elsewhere. Arteta probably wants to start one. Whether he'll get the time or not, we will have to wait and see. So touching on Jurgen Klopp just there, let's take that a little bit further. Now, I'm not suggesting for one minute that he should be sacked. I think he's a great personality, first of all, to have in the Premier League. And what he's done with Liverpool is amazing. However... Just mentioning his personality there, is that almost a factor that brings with it some emotion? You know, he creates them bonds with the fans and they feel he's one of their own, even though he's obviously a German national. And it's almost harder to say goodbye. So does he get more time there in that situation because he is Jurgen Klopp? Now, I guess that's an interesting point. Would he get that time at Chelsea? No, but the club is run in a different way. You know, this season they're not retaining the title in a very, you know, very well. But, you know, Mourinho's done it with Chelsea. However, he got sacked. So it's it's one of them. But um, emotion, really, you can see what it, what it means to clubs and fans. And maybe it gets in the way of business and then big decisions. So what about players then? I spoke managers, but what about players? Now, there's a lot of similarities, a lot of overlaps, but... Let's take Gareth Bale, for example, now currently in a decent run of form, showing glimpses of prime Bale back in 2013-14 when he left Spurs. But you could argue that it wasn't good enough. He wasn't getting chances, first of all. I can appreciate that. But it wasn't fantastic from Bale. You know, it was looking a bit, was it just, you know, the romance to bring him back? And it was all kind of a good idea, but was never really going to work out. Now, he's proven them doubters wrong at the moment. But it's just an example of a club legend, a hero that's come back, maybe just because that offer's on the table and they just can't resist because of that emotion and relationship they have with the fans and the club. You look at people like Omri and Drogba who have returned to respective Chelsea and Arsenal. And I think it's a bit of a strange one because I was never going to be upset about Drogba coming back to Chelsea However, did it make sense? He barely played. He scored a couple of goals, one against United, which was big, I guess, in the league. But his last kick before that was to win the Champions League, to crown Chelsea champions of Europe, what they've been trying to do for a decade, even longer. And he come back and he didn't tarnish that. And I think a player has got to do a lot of bad things to tarnish that reputation. You know, you even look at Lampard. No Chelsea fan looks at him any different unless you're deluded even though he's got sacked. And Omri coming back to Arsenal, you know, scoring that goal and all that emotion comes back. But maybe it's just a fleeting moment and maybe in the bigger picture it doesn't make sense. 
However, you know, I think if I was in that position and my the club that took me under their wing really, and I felt a part of for ten years plus, if they offered you a you know an opportunity to go back, I think you grab it with both hands. But let me know what you think in the comments. You know, I think we could all agree that emotion does exist in football. But does it really influence those big decisions? Is Klopp getting a little bit longer because of the character he is, because of his personality? Did Lampard get a little bit longer? Did Lampard just get the job because he's Frank Lampard? You could argue, yes, he did. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And who knows, maybe you learned something as well. And like I say, get in the comments. You know, Let me know your thoughts. And I'll see you on the next one. So much to the poltergeist Trying to hold on a love but it's forced